is getting set up here. Right. <clears throat> Just getting logged in here, getting set up. Hey there, uh, Lisa, how are you doing today? Ugh. Getting everything set up here. Thank you all for tuning in. We got a couple people planning on coming. Heather should be on here in a little bit. I was out in the garage starting to, I was recording a couple of TikToks and going through updating a couple of things and then figured I'd go ahead and jump on. And I think it's around nine o'clock anyways. But anyways, it's been an inter interesting week for you. If you want, does it work? The, I think I have it set where people can actually do guest requests too. Let me see. You could do a guest request and pop on here for a second. I'm sorry, I'm not here in the garage. The beeping. Is that? Oh. Sorry, that's a new thing. Um, but yeah, now I'll just jump on here to talk about narcissism, answer some questions, anything like that. Um, let's see here. I know that Heather's planning on joining here in a few. So can you play, explain narcs and their gift giving? So a lot of times like gift giving for narcs is um going back to like love bombing. And a lot of times it's like manipulative. It's trying to um, really throw people off the scent that they're actually narcissists or that they're coming across a certain way or things like that. A lot of times the gift giving is over the top is love bombing to the place where they're distracting the person where they're trying to convince the person that they're the best thing ever um, when in the reality they're just trying to manipulate they're just trying to control uh, just like trying to control the outcome um, a lot of times it's to distract just kind of like future faking a lot of times is to distract the person to um, make them not realize like what's going on um, but looking at it like farther out like long term trying to distract them of the here and now problems uh, when married, X went to three different therapists. He claims they told him, I'm the problem. Your thoughts. So as a narcissist, it's very easy to manipulate therapists. Um, it's very easy to manipulate their perception of you, how you interact, how, because you got to remember a lot of narcissists come across very nice to a lot of people. Uh, a lot of narcissists come across as like the best thing ever, which, you know, they think they're the best thing ever, but a lot of narcissists are great at manipulating manipulating people like no matter what you know so like going this is why a lot of times I suggest this is why I recommend along with Heather and with other people to not go to couples therapy with a narcissist and yourself not go to couples therapy together because it's very easy to manipulate so for instance we were in uh we we're in a counseling session uh, about a month or so ago with a counselor we've now dropped him <laughs> we're not going to anymore we're, we're, we're with a counselor and it was more of like a biblical counselor and he brought up the concept of um of how like Caleb made me feel or something as far as like when I come home like is the house clean is the house picked up or something does she make it a welcoming environment and stuff like that and like the stuff like I can understand there's like principles that he was saying that like might be like positive but there was also things that he was like saying that I was like like me in an unhealthy state, like you're just giving me fuel. Like you're giving me fuel, man, to go back and just rip into my wife of like, see, you're not a good wife. You're why I'm this way. Like narcissists can manipulate therapists like really easy, but a lot of times therapists aren't uh, equipped a lot of times to in talking with people about narcissism or narcissistic traits. So oftentimes, especially in couples therapy, they just give them like fuel for the fire. It's really bad. Um. Sorry, a bunch of people popped up here. Uh, been no contact. Oh, I keep missing some comments. No contact for a week with my husband. Yesterday, I dropped off a lot of things. So friends, that's good. It's hard. It's really hard to go no contact, especially if there's like a trauma bond, especially if there's a bunch of stuff going on there. 
stay strong. It can be very, very difficult. Very difficult. Um, where is... I assume it's like 9 o'clock. Heather should be jumping on here. Um, oh, there she is. Seven clients up. today. Ah, hey. here we are. Hey. Hey, hey, oh, yes. Um, I was just telling them I'm a little tired today because I had like seven clients and a lot of trauma work. Um, yeah, and and I don't like, I know that sometimes people think that coaches or therapists get triggered and I never, ever get triggered, but I do get tired, you know, so. It was a busy day for me too, but not very tired because yesterday I came home, we did a bunch of stuff and um Kayla put Sophia down and then she went and took a shower in her job probably like 8 30 or whatever I was like posting a couple of videos trying to post on like other platforms and I was like sitting on the couch and I like laid my head down for a while and I was like out like she Ouch. woke me up at like 11 <laughs> 30 and I was like I'm going to bed and I was like what time is it and I went to bed and yeah I was like out yesterday but those kind of those kind of naps are so disconcerting because like you don't know what day it is like is it the next right. day is it <laughs> Yeah, I woke up and I was just like, oh, dang, like I wasted so much time, but. Nah, when you, when you sleep hard like that, you need it. Yeah. Hey, I need hey, it Sarah more, Jessica. Than, more than I want to admit, but I normally don't sleep that much, period. So it's all good. It's life. It's fun. Hey, How have you Chris been? Cassie, we haven't done a dual live you? in like, what, a month? I know. <laughs> I was like, excuse me. No. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Well, I had eye surgery and that like bumped everything around. And then yeah. uh, last week we were gone. We got Niagara Falls, which is pretty awesome. So that was, that was, yeah. Really all fun. those pictures you sent were so cute. Yeah. We missed, we missed cool. you all too. <laughs> we're being told that they missed us. So. Well, that's, that's nice. I appreciate that. I know. I like, I like being, I like trying to have a consistent live, whether that's like both of us or just, just myself, like either way, it's nice to have a consistent day. Sometimes I feel like I need to like change days, but it's kind of hard with my schedule. So mm -hmm. cause I'm normally sleeping Saturday night through Tuesday night by nine o'clock Wednesday. A lot of times we have small group Thursday, I go live Friday is normally date night. And then Saturday I'm back to going to sleep early. So. I love that there's a date night in there. That's really important. Yes, Sarah Jessica, you've had a week. It sounds like. Um, I I bet you're I bet you're tired, um, but still pumping out the great content though. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So busy busy lives, busy weeks. It sounds like you had a hectic day and everything. Um. I was, uh, I know I shared with you earlier today, but I was really surprised I had someone from um, uh, The Sun uh, online newspaper from the UK that, that wanted to have me um, do an article about narcissism and like how to, how to spot a narcissist in like a dating relationship. So that'll be interesting um, for me to work on. I'll totally help you if you want some brainstorming or yeah. some the view from the other side like no absolutely. i mean you don't have to give me any like no i'm not saying any credit but like if you want to toss it at me i'll be happy to like no i appreciate check it, it. Out. like sometimes sometimes from like this side there's some things that are just kind of like automatic that i don't view as being like red flags because like in my mind i'm the one creating them so it doesn't seem like a red flag you know what i mean um yeah so like it'll be interesting like kind of like writing that up they did offer because i was like i'm not sure about writing it they did offer they were like hey we could just do an interview and then like ghost ride it and then like um run it by you to make sure it's okay and i was like eh, i kind of want to like at least try it first you know so. yeah so my so my experience with that because i've been like i've been on some radio shows out here in metro detroit and some newspapers and stuff they never they never get it right they <laughs> never ever do even like and they'll send you the final copy and you're like that's really not exactly what I said, or that's, you missed the main point. So no. I've learned, like, let me write it. And then if you need to edit it, that's fine. But at least it's in my words. Um, so I think you should try it first. Yeah, I'm going to try it. And then tomorrow's my first day ever going live on Instagram. So um, going live on Instagram um, with a girl in the UK that's a therapist there. So that'll be interesting. Wait, who that. is it? 
Um, Who is it? Uh, Stina Steins. Oh, no. Okay. Um, I know a different one in the UK. Okay. Yeah. And it's hard. I can't like double check on my phone or it like bumps me out of live. But yeah, she's got, I don't know, she got like 56K or some followers, or whatever. And then she was actually the contact that had someone contact me from the sun about doing an article. So. That is so cool. Isn't it like wild when you realize that there are people in other countries, right? you know, that want to do podcasts or interviews or lives or whatever. Right. That's really great. No, absolutely. Um, well, I've already got like a bunch of comments. Let me see here real quick. Ginger, are we back? She said we froze for a sec, or at least uh -oh. I did. Are we back? Mine says good connection. Um <laughs> Mine does too, but every once in a while, we had big storms mm. uh, the other day. Okay, thank you so much. So we're back. There we go. Um. So, okay, so the way that um, I, at least on my side, that I'm doing the lives is I have, thank you, Hale, yes, I have a, a few moderators in here. So if me and Ben get into a conversation or answering a question, thank you. And um, we don't get to you. One of the mods who is very well versed in NPD abuse and recovery will help and answer questions. So somebody is always going to be paying attention and making sure that your questions are answered and stuff. How so, do you make them and already? if you don't follow Ben already, um, you can toggle over to him as long as you come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how you make, make people moderators. If you click on their name, and then let me see. So if you click on their profile and then you go over to manage on the right corner, then you can add them as a moderator. It's been too long since we've done this. And what's really cool about it is like I offered to do it for Kelly once and then I was like, oh, and for Nat once too. And I was like, oh, I, I guess I'm a forever moderator. So, you know, whoever you add, like if Sarah Jessica ever wants me to be a moderator for her one time, every time I come on, I'm a moderator the way okay. she is right now. So it's it's good because you kind of have your like squad, you know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. I'm just popping over here. Quick. Let's see. Cool. Well, yeah, the fun. mods are great. I'll mess with that some as we go. So, but yeah, I haven't really done that. Um, it's really see. helpful because then people don't feel like they're being ignored, you know? Right. Like when we were on with Lee and his feed was like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can't see anything yeah, except for the I one comment that stalled. <laughs> Do you remember that one person who was like, I trust Lee and Ben, but I don't, I'm not sure about that Heather person. Uh, yeah, and I was yeah. like, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Super sketchy. Um, <laughs> all right, let's jump in. Let's catch up on a couple of these. Uh, what's the most important thing you've learned slash changed in your journey? Um, I think I think one of the most important things learning has just been to stop the lies. You know, the lies to myself, the lies to my wife, the lies to others, the lies to God, the lies between myself and all those people. Um, I think that's really like the most important thing is like, truth sheds light on a lot of things and you can't get anywhere unless you start finding the truth unless you start finding what's behind the lies like the actual legitimate things um i had another thing but i lost it so uh but yeah like really just cutting the lies um do narcissists mean to ruin holidays um yeah i would say i would say that either mean to ruin holidays or they're just annoyed that the holidays are taking away from themselves <laughs> because if they're not in the limelight or if they're not focused on like hey why is it not all about me then they're gonna ruin that holiday and i think sometimes it is very intentional sometimes it's very intentional as far as like they're focused on themselves not necessarily intentional of like hey i'm going to ruin the holiday it's more or less like why is the holiday not about me kind of thing unfortunately I swear to God, when I was with the sociopath, as you and Lee have told me, um, I would start feeling super stressed out in July mm -hmm. about the holidays, like six months before. And I would already be like, what could I possibly do this time? Like, how can I role model for him how this should go? Like, how to just like enjoy and not, 
you know, but he was so into his parents thinking that he was the shit. Sorry. Um, and I would be the one who took off all the days of work for Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything. And I would do the majority of the shopping, the cooking, the wrapping of the presents, everything. And every single time they would come over, they would be like, oh, so-and-so, this is amazing. And he would be like, thanks, I got up really early to stuff the turkey. <laughs> and that would be the only thing he did. And I was just like astonished. And then I started to realize when I started to really dive in and research this a few years ago, that um, they were his primary supply and he counted on them to, you know, and it's just, there's, you know, your birthday is up and down. Sometimes they want to buy the expensive gift that you end up trying to figure out how to pay for. Um, and they're proud of themselves. But most of the time, I literally, that video I did a few months ago about buying the NARC present on my birthday is true. I would always go and do something or buy something for him just so he wouldn't rage out on, at me. So I, do, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying because everybody's different, but I do think some of them are already angry a month before the holiday or the intimate partner's birthday or the stepchild's birthday or even their own kid's birthday happens because they already know it's not going to be about them. Right. I think maybe that depends on the level, yeah, you know, on that. the spectrum. No, definitely, I can see that. Um, Sarah says so. In a in a different in a different um situation, I can explain it. But basically, he hit all nine traits, and then I think there's is it five on the sociopath, and he hit like four of them. So, um, and he actually um through a lot of um a lot. <laughs> A lot on in spite of all of the manipulation with the therapist that we had as a family where we all saw her individually, she ended up diagnosing him and she's a forensic psychologist. So he immediately quit therapy and tried to find another therapist and then another one and then another one only saw them for a month or two. I think they already figured him out or were close to diagnosing him and every time he disparaged the therapist. So he was trying to find somebody to disprove his original diagnosis. And I mean, I could go on. There's a Lee uh, has told me before that he definitely has sees like the sociopathic tendencies were so are so clear um but yeah there in my case there was actually a diagnosis so but okay so what are people saying about yeah sarah jessica saying it's like buying a gift for the other child so they don't flip out like you have a three-year-old and a five-year-old and you got to buy the three-year-old something so they don't flip out on the five-year-old's birthday yeah that's that exactly makes everybody what it was like. care of everybody's a winner right Partly what brings all this out. Uh, now, does that someone... happen to you? What? Has that, I mean, you seem very different now from when we first became friends. And I've watched your videos, obviously. I'm always like, we're always coming to each other's videos. But like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about you like internally. But what I'm seeing coming out in you is compassion. And I'm not sure that's the same as empathy, but I see the compassion so, like, when you're talking about holidays, like, has there been a change for you like in, in how holidays? you react? Um, yeah, holidays, birthdays, your wife's birthday. I think for me, what's, like, slowly been coming a little bit more is, like, making, like, her birthday a little bit more of an emphasis than it has been in the past. Like, a lot of times it's been, like, glazed over. I don't think for me, I made as big of a deal about holidays, but also some of the holidays also revolved around us having friends and me getting supply. So for me, some of the holidays weren't a bad thing. Some of the holidays were, oh, I get more of a thing, you know? So for me, I don't think I had as much of drama around the holidays in per se of like me distracting people from the holidays because i was like if i made the holidays work better i got more out of it in one sense mm. okay so you were more on the side of positive supply no because some of that supply was cheating at the same time depending on which year. oh oh okay yeah. okay hey <laughs> green-haired mama um how are you Someone said, would someone so, change after one year of therapy or is that too soon to see any changes? Um, I wouldn't say it's too soon to see changes, but I wouldn't say like, oh, they're healed. Um, if anything, like 
after one year of therapy, like you want to be seeing changes throughout the year. You want to continue to see changes because that's the mark of someone actually like growing um, versus you're not just going to see changes and then they're going to stop and be all better. Um, sorry, I'm trying to catch up real quick. Do narcissists not have a soul? Uh, no, I believe they have a soul. Uh, I believe a lot of times it's scarred and a lot of times there's a lot of things that scarred in their emotions, whatever they went through, abuse, how they view people, things like that. But um, I don't believe that they're always a lost cause. Um, you, you know, that's, can I just interject on that? Yeah. I think that regardless of if it's a, a, a narcissist who has realized they're a narcissist, goes to therapy, gets a diagnosis, is, a diagnosis becomes self-aware, right? Mm -hmm. And now you, if you, people like you and Lee, again, very rare. Don't don't take them as an example that your partner or family member could possibly do what they're doing because it is very rare. But that wanting to improve, right? That's something that we all are trying to do too. And I think that's really important when you're looking, when you're ready to date again or you're ready to make new friends. Are these people that you want to um, consider, are they self-aware? You know, if you ask them, where are you on your self-growth journey? How do you feel about self-improvement? If, if they don't say, if, that, if they don't give you an answer, that's a resounding like, yes, I'm into that. Because so many people, especially if they're Gen X or older, are going to be like, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that that journey has to like, I don't want to. I'm not the same person I was when I was 30. And I hope I'm not going to be the same when I'm 70. Like we all have growth. Otherwise, you're just going to work, watching right. TV and going to bed. You know what yeah. I mean? And some people like once they start realizing who they are, they don't care. Or they use that as a crutch to you know, be like, Hey, well, this is how I am. So you're going to have to get used to it. You know, things like that. Right. Like, I think that's something that for me, like, you know, cause a lot of people don't like labels. A lot of people don't like the term narcissist, like turn around and you know, things like that. But like, for me, like once I got to the place where I started understanding and realizing like, Hey, like this is real. And this is what I actually struggle with. Like for me, it wasn't something that was able to be touted so I could just do however I wanted. And it also wasn't something that was like, debilitating of like oh I can never change or I can never work on this to me I was like hey like I actually have an idea of what's wrong so if I actually know what's mm -hmm. wrong I can actually start working towards a solution um versus like feeling like a dead end of you know this is never going to get better or I'm I'm cursed or there's just something wrong with me or like whatever but having no clue like starting to learn and define it actually gave more traction of you know there might be a way to learn how to grow versus just stuck I love that. If I can ask you a real quick question, um, and Angie Tots is asking, what type of narcissists are Ben and Lee? I certainly don't want to answer that. I know that you guys are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, Do you know? What would you say Lee is? I don't remember exactly. I don't think he's. I don't remember him. Going so usually over we in the video. I mean, like we can get into dark triad stuff and all that. I don't usually talk about that because it's just a whole different thing. Yeah. Um, but normally what we're talking about is like grandiose, covert, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, am I, Sarah, Sarah, Jessica, am I missing one? I think I am. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. So covert being really under the radar, like really conniving, but like, you know, um, grandiose narcissist is almost like, Hey, I'm a narcissist. Deal with it. You know, mm -hmm. I t remember I was telling you to watch Mad Men. Mm -hmm. I never did. <laughs> but yeah. When you have time, I got it. I'm telling you, it's fascinating. We're my, my partner and I are going to be on the last episode and I'm just like blown away by how well done this is the, the whole thing. And they, they cover BPD, they cover codependence, like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, overt covert. Oh yeah. Malignant. Thank you. Overt, covert, grandiose, malignant. Malignant being more like the ex I was with, whose devious planning gets a lot of joy out of like planning something that absolutely like hurts somebody in some way. Um, grandiose is more out there, you know, the, you know they're a narcissist. They probably know they're a narcissist, don't care. What's the um, main difference between overt and grandiose? I feel like, is it 
overt is a little bit more i feel like grandiose is more like hello you know i'm here you know like worship me like you know and i feel like overt is just a little bit more in your face yeah i know there's a lot of types she's just giving me some there's a lot of different breakdowns so um and I feel then like vulnerable everywhere you narcissists. look, there's like different definitions for them too. I don't feel like there's a yeah doc you know how i was telling you and lee that i love dr carter he does a really good job on youtube of breaking that stuff up there's also vulnerable and they're the eternal victim you think i'm a piece of shit i can't do anything right and they really want like a mother figure or father figure or someone to take care of them and tell them oh no you're fine i'll take care of this so there's there's a and then there's you know it's a spectrum so do you know like any like what would you say or can you not for me i would be more on the covert and at times overt side um not necessarily grandiose and definitely not vulnerable because there hasn't been much of my life i've thought i've been the victim or anything like that um there's been times i've played the victim obviously but not like that men central mentality kind of a thing um i think there's been different times in my life where i have been either overt or covert um i would say a lot of the a lot of the times it's been more along lines of like covert um but uh partly because i'm a high d on the disc personality and i'm enneagram eight there's a lot of times that i am like overt especially in like a work situation where I'm like, no, Mm -hmm. we're doing it this way because I'm the boss, you know, like, especially like early on um, in my career, like there's a lot of times I would just make calls because I knew it was the right call and I was going to, you know, this is what it is, you know, and early on that looked like steamrolling and just running over people. And I had to start thinking through like, how do I actually, and like some of this, like a lot of my journey is like, a lot of times people are like, you know, what was like the one thing or what was, what was like the moment you knew? I was like, it wasn't, it was like been on this journey for years, you know? And when I first started working for Chick-fil-A, like I would just come out with an idea and just be like, Hey, we're doing this and not care about anybody's opinion. And then have to get to the place where I'm like, okay, if I want to be able to do this, how do I actually like backtrack it to be able to get people's buy-in and get people's opinion and be able to get to the right result kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. And so that internally started changing some of my overtness where I just like run people over to uh, at that point, I don't think some of that was narcissism. That was just like actually learning personalities and learning like how to communicate and build sure. buy-in and build trust. Um, but I think for the narcissism side, there was more covert kind of after that than there was as much overt. Um, oh, and I'm so really Sarah just said could... over here. <laughs> okay, let me just say one thing because I go. asked her. Sarah Jessica just reminded me of all of these. Um, so yeah, cerebral, which is all up here. Um, okay. Malignant, which I was married to. Somatic, vulnerable, parasitic. Uh, ginger, I know you're hearing that one. Overt and covert. And then she says all of these are grandiose. Yeah, so there's just so much research cool. and there's so yeah. many things. It's kind of hard to say like... Um, you know, you have to kind of dig deeper and to figure out like who's what. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Oh, Dr. Romani is amazing. Yeah. We were talking about her <laughs> too. So, was it Lee um, that shared the other day of like how much her sessions are? W- <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I saw that and I was just like, holy so, cow. Sorry. <laughs> so, me, Ben, and Lee talk every single day. I don't know if anybody knows this. <laughs> we literally do. Sometimes I'll get off work and I'll be like, whoa, my group chat blew up. <laughs> and I, yeah, so we were talking about Dr. Romney because, um, you know, she's amazing and, and, you know, it's possible that one day that we might do an interview with her or whatever. But yeah, her sessions are $500 an hour. But supply and demand, I mean, when you have as many followers as she does, you have to make it expensive because otherwise she would have no time to do anything. So, but she's, I mean, look at all the free content she gives. She's phenomenal. She changed my life. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start catching up on these or else we're going to get in trouble for not answering questions. Okay, go ahead. Your turn. Your turn. (laughs) All right. um, Do you pretend to be, ah, and it just moves. All right, we're going to we're going to fire through these. All right, do you pretend to be confused to gaslight people? Yes, it's a super awesome uh tactic. You know, if you can confuse people, you can convince them that they're confused, like no, like that never happened. Like what are you talking about? Um being confused is a way to manipulate and is a way to gaslight people. Um 
why don't you address narcissists and open relationships poly polyamory proposals after getting caught uh yeah we can oh that. i know what they're saying now it has been two full-blown poly relationships and i feel like shit about it what were you what were you saying okay so i had I don't have experience with this, but someone close to me does. And um, after the narcissist, by the way, a female was caught cheating and, you know, talked them into getting back together and working on it or whatever. The solution was to be poly. Mm -hmm. So this person didn't go into the relationship. Poly didn't find, necessarily find out they were poly. They were cheating and then said, you know, we should try out poly. It'll help us stay together. I'm not going to get into like anybody's sexuality because there are people that are in that lifestyle and it works for them. But some narcissists will do this and they will they that will be their excuse. Like, I didn't really cheat on you. I'm actually polyamorous. Whoops. And then come to find out they do the exact same thing to the next person because again, yeah. narcissists always do the same thing. So I think that's what they might be asking. That makes sense. And from, from that perspective, like a narcissist being with two other people. So even if it's a guy being with two other girls or a girl being with two other guys or whatever, it might be um, from like the narcissist perspective, like you've like arrived. Like that's like, ultimate like you're like you're like supply success, everywhere you know yeah like you're like i can have my cake and eat it too and still have cake left over like really like <laughs> that is like that is like a high um and there's been situations in my past that haven't been that exactly but there's been times that i've you know worked on trying to manipulate people towards that goal because i knew like hey like that is a that is a high that is something that you know if that happened then i would be like oh i've actually arrived where i wanted to be and it's like a thrill of trying to get to that place like just being with multiple people on a single day like that's the same kind of like high um again not good not endorsing it but that is true as far as what's there um mm -hmm. if narcissists so selfish why are you giving your time to help survivors and victims um yeah so like narcissists are very selfish and I've been selfish for the majority of my life and I'm trying to work on changing that I'm trying to work on bringing awareness to this stuff trying to bring awareness to how it destroys people and lives and trying to cut the lies in my life to be able to help other people cut their own uh-huh oh oh she is a martyr sweet hi um nice. how do you know when you lie to yourself <laughs> um takes a uh, you you have to be able to start cutting the lies to everybody else so you can figure out what truth is still left um and really it takes a lot of uh reflection a lot of like looking inside of like what have i grown up with a wrong perspective what have i been developed thinking is true but is actually not true like really questioning a lot of different things and like diving deep of like what has cost me so much like mm -hmm. what have i remember like walking like a mile two miles with these seven rocks in my backpack for the wake up warrior challenge and like walking through thinking through hey there's seven lies that i'm carrying around what have these lies cost me what have these cost me financially what have these cost me relationship what have these cost me with my communication to god what have these cost me with my communication like in internally like my being like what ha what is the price of these and like really you start mm -hmm. diving deeper and deeper and start realizing like hey like this lie, this lie, this lie, but it takes a lot of time. Um, so I have a, I want to ask you a question and, and I don't know if this is a challenge or not, but like, good. so that's really awesome. Have you ever done that same challenge and thought, what have these seven lies cost my wife mm -hmm. or my child, or have you done the reverse? Um, yeah, that was actually, it, it was a multiple day, multiple concept mm. challenge so yeah that was actually part mm -hmm. of it too yeah and um i don't have them i don't have all of mine or all of the ones i went through written like written down near me they're upstairs in a book but yeah so that was that was part of it too if you're ever willing to share that at some point that would be a probably a, a video that would really you know 
I have shared the of... I have shared the seven original lines, but that those were done a while back. Um, mm-hmm. Most people probably don't remember them, and that was a while back. I don't even think they got a whole lot of views. So I was like, eh, and kind of moved on. But yeah, I did share the seven original ones, um, and I haven't gone back through and shared like m- much more about some of the warrior stuff. Well, yeah. you have almost. 30,000 followers now. So, you know, sure. repeating that content, you know, is, sure. is helpful. So Ben, I have two questions for you. The first, from um, I'm hitting like 47 Mama... messages over here that I'm behind. So yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Mama <laughs> Hides wants to know if you feel the need for revenge, why, why do narcs n- never stop pursuing revenge? And then the second question from Bruwinski is, do you think you can ever have real intimacy? So on the revenge one, what was it mainly? Of like, Why won't nar- narcs ever stop pursuing revenge? You know, like the way that the one I'm with tried to hoover me again with a freaking crazy email. Like why right. do they or why do they keep trying to hurt you when you're trying to move on kind of a thing? Some of it's addictive. Like some of it's like coming back to sometimes a supply is addictive or some of it is just like that control, that manipulation is addictive. Like not even the person, like you could have a person that the narcissist isn't even attracted to, but they're attracted to the manipulation. They're attracted to the control. And so they'll come back to it over and over again, trying to have that control, trying to have that manipulation or trying to see what they can do, you know, just to see Mm -hmm. like, can I manipulate this person to do X, Y, and Z? You know, if I can, like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, like it's, it's awful, but yeah, like that's, that's definitely like a part of it. And then the other one was like, do I think a narcissist can, can, you feel, have, real, can feel real feel intimacy. intimacy as far mm-hmm. as like connectedness with someone or. I think that's what they mean. I don't, I think they mean like, not just like sex because obviously narcissists will go have sex with, you know, whatever, but, but like, intimacy i think it's i think it's possible i think it's few and far between i think a lot of narcissists don't open themselves up to vulnerability to feel intimacy or to feel a connectedness Mm -hmm. or closeness um you almost put a wall up right like yeah i mean you want a wall so people don't get in um i would i would say that it is possible but it's behind like a lot of honesty and for me like I think it's been possible and it and I've experienced it I would say at least like once um but it's not easy and doesn't it's not like automatic or anything like that for sure mm-hmm. um uh let's see someone said hey, you all, if you have if you have questions for Ben that you want him specifically to answer so I don't keep interrupting him I will not have hurt feelings. You can hop over to his side and ask the question and then you can come back here like, you know, um, so he can just keep answering yeah, I questions. Need to, I need to catch up on these. Um, someone says, hey, you seem grounded. Lee is not grounded. You seem very calm. Even do you get angry? Yes, I get angry. Um, I get I get really angry and annoyed sometimes. I just don't show it a lot of times on here. Um, I don't. I don't really rage anymore, which is nice. Um, but it still is a struggle and it still is internal. Like it is, you can feel it a lot of times like coming. Um, but yeah, no, I do get angry. Like, even though I'm self-aware, like Kayla and I still get into arguments. We still have, you know, disagreements and frustrating times, you know, like we had a moment today that was frustrating. We were just like annoyed at each other because of stress going on the stuff we were trying to communicate and we didn't have time to communicate it. So like, yeah, no, I, I get angry. Um, I think, okay. yeah, Lee, Lee is definitely more overt in some ways um, <laughs> than I am. Um, because you have to remember, I like, I'm also more of, I've also been more covert. That's also how I've been. So, like, that's why, like, even in, for instance, like, whenever we do a live like, with Lee, there's a lot of times that I will sit back and I will wait for him to talk because that's how he is he's more overt and then i'll wait till he finishes and then i'll talk because i'm not going to try to trump his overtness because i already know what's there i'm going to be the one that's going to come behind and like say something else um there's a whole nother dynamic there i, I, lo- I love lee but there's a whole nother dynamic there um, i remember that because i kept saying what do you <laughs> think ben <laughs> exactly because like because like when you when you walk in the room you figure out who's in control of the room and 
it's not always who is in control of the room that's actually in control of the room, but you have to know who's like the main person there to be able to work the room. Anyways, I'm going to continue with some of these or else we'll get. Um, all right, we're going to fire through these. Okay, ready. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Do they purposely forget holidays or anniversaries, birthdays, et cetera, to punish you? Um, yes, sometimes they do to punish you. Sometimes they forget it because themselves is so much more important than your holiday or birthday or anniversary. So they don't even think about it. Um, or they forget about it. Uh, also, if narcissists are continuing continuing to lie and manipulate a lot, there's also times that you do experience some types of memory loss. Um, Wait, yeah. wait, what? hang on. Uh -oh. I have never heard that before. I know that the malignant narcissist that I was with got a lot of joy because you could see it all over his face. If he just ran to Rite Aid and got me a freaking candle on Mother's Day and got his mom a candle and was, you know, after I got him something great on Father's Day or like on my birthday, like the smirking, like he would just like write on a like notebook piece of paper, mm. happy birthday and come home with nothing, of course, you know, because obviously I did something horrific two days ago by getting him corn on the cob uh, that wasn't the exact type of corn of the cob he wanted or whatever the hell it was. So like he got a lot of joy out of that and I could tell, and he got a lot of supply at, well, he didn't get joy. He got supply. Right. Um, but I have never heard of this memory loss thing for real with an arc. I've only heard of that as a, a, like a excuse. Is that actually true? I mean, I've seen it a lot of times as an excuse, but when you like come down to it and you're like, Hey, if the world revolves around me and I don't really care about you, then I'm going to get to the place where I'm not actually going to remember things about you or remember things that I should, because I don't care, you know? So like, maybe your favorite color is purple and you know, I might bring you something green because I want to piss you off or I might get to the place where I'm like, I didn't really remember because I didn't really care enough about you to actually remember. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not also, I'm, I'm not also implying that like they lose memory loss as far as like, they never remember those holidays. I'm just saying like sometimes because of lies, manipulation, gaslighting, there'll be like memory gaps and it's not necessarily like, oh, I never remember a holiday or I never remember a birthday, but like sometimes there's like pieces missing, I think. But I think that's just because of all the lies. We have like a secret admirer in here um, that we both are very close to. And that's all I'm going to say because it appears that that's how they want it. So, <laughs> but thank you for all the gifts. Thank you. <laughs> um, he's got therapy. All right, let's see. I'm still in love with my narc husband. Should I move on or hope? Um, if they're not changing or growing, then you need to move on because they don't care to change or grow. A uh, little verse on as thank you. Husband knows. And the ben, Wait, ever can felt? I say something? Go I ahead. have to say something. Go ahead. So, okay. A lot of... Oh, okay. He just showed Haley. We're so <laughs> happy you're here. <laughs> um, so... The narcissist, when they sense that their grade A supply, usually their intimate partner, maybe their child, is about to leave, they will often pull out all the stops. All of a sudden, they're cleaning the house. They're going shopping. They get you a little gift. They are going to go to therapy. They'll give you a back rub. They'll do all the things that they always knew they were supposed to do. They'll, you know, get a better job, whatever it is. Don't confuse that with actually wanting to change and recognizing if they're saying i want to go to therapy for you and for us forget that if anybody isn't going to therapy for themselves to improve themselves it's it don't trust it time tells action tells right um behavior changes over a long period of time and it gets better going forward so if that's what they want to do let them go do that on their own if it's really genuine I mean, it's it's just we've all been through so many of us have been through that where, you know, oh, but they said they're going to change and they're going to therapy and they're probably at the therapist telling the therapist how terrible you are, you know, so be really careful. Again, I just want to emphasize that Ben and Lee are very rare, like very rare. So don't pin your hopes on that. I would say take care of you. Go to therapy for you. Figure out who you are, what you like, what you want with your life and let them do them. And then, you know, 
No, absolutely. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> um, Make Lee a moderator. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think he jumped back on yours. Of course he did. Hey, he was on mine first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. It keeps like jumping every time I try to scroll. Um, before you knew you were a narcissist, did you know that you were being manipulative? No, at that point, I didn't think I was being manipulative. I thought I was just being avoidant. I thought I was like trying to get out of situations or I was trying to maybe control situations, but I didn't view myself as being a manipulator. Um, I just viewed myself as trying to avoid stuff, you know, avoid a reaction, avoid a response, avoid someone's emotion or something like that, but not necessarily thinking that I was manipulative. Um, hey, Jen Amber. Someone asked a question that everybody said was a great question, and I don't see the question. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. We're doing a bad job of keeping up with these. Um, why are we addicted to narcissistic people? It's a pattern in my boyfriends. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, a lot of times, like, people that are brought up in um, a household that has, like, narcissistic tendencies tend to, you know, go towards people with narcissistic tendencies because that's what they're used to. Um, other times mm -hmm. people that um, are grown up in households that haven't really been taken care of or haven't really shown a lot of affection or emotion can um, have narcissists take advantage of that. And they can come in with that mm -hmm. love bombing and that manipulation. And it feels like love because it's not something that the other person has felt or has experienced. Yeah. And it's funny because I told my both of my therapists, but especially my my last one is I am like good in every of my life. I've got great friends, great career, like, you know, involved with the community, know lots of amazing people, like nothing in my life is bad except my relationships, my intimate partner relationships. And that was something that I realized was a cycle because of what you were just saying. Like it goes back to your childhood, like your inner child will keep making decisions for you because they're looking to resolve whatever wasn't resolved in your childhood. So, and I'm, I mean, this is actually, there's all kinds of research based on this, but you have to let that hurt child stop making the decisions because you're going to keep repeating this pattern until you really get into therapy or coaching and figure out what you need to heal in yourself. Once that happens, you will never go that way again. Or if you accidentally do because somebody is pretending to be someone they're not, you're going to like notice that in two weeks as opposed to 20 years. Like, you know, so working on yourself is the key to stopping that. And all of a sudden, what you used to be attracted to, you are, well, those people won't even come your way because they're going to see like this person isn't having this shit. Like, Sorry. Um, but like you're going to start noticing like green flags instead of like the, all the red flags that you see once you're in the relationship, you will see before you get into it. it your whole life will change. It, this will not be a pattern for you anymore, but it starts with us. So a uh, question for me, did I have any addictions during an arc stage or drink heavy? Um, so for me, addictions really during narc stage um like workaholicism um i worked like all the time so that's all i wanted to do is i worked non-stop so when i was with chick-fil-a i worked 60 70 hours a week kind of a thing um so a lot of work um had some at times like gambling addiction um some like pornography addiction um didn't drink the drugs smoke anything like that part of it was because i already knew i struggled with some addictions um that's there's mainly two reasons why I don't drink. Um, one was just some of my upbringing and um, early girlfriend I was with that her dad was uh, an alcoholic for a period of time and I saw what it did to her and I saw what it did to her family and so that really turned me off to it. And then also, second reason is because I have a very addictive nature. I like to jump into things like 110% and so... I don't touch it because I don't want to open myself up to that possibility because I know it's definitely a possibility. So I have a question that a lot of people are commenting on and Sarah says is saying, shoot, I lost it. Hang on. It was, 
she basically she gets scared when the narcissist starts being nice and she wants to know why i know for me as a victim it was because i knew that as soon as that cycle was over we were going to zoom into devaluing and then abuse so like that to me was an indicator aside from whatever else he might have been doing that was part of the cycle so that's that's how i felt what about all of you go ahead if you want to go ahead and answer on your side can you repeat the original question when the narcissist is nice out of nowhere sometimes the victims get scared there's like a foreboding feeling like you're like something's up something's gonna happen something or something that did happen and they're being nice to make it but make it up for themselves like they just had a really good day with whoever they're cheating with so they came home and they were really nice to you to make themselves feel better about themselves to get rid of maybe a tiny build of tiny bit of guilt or a tiny bit of shame that they felt for an instant they come home and be like oh like see everything's good here everything you know everything's working fine here so must be fine that i'm doing what i'm doing on the side Mm hmm. I'm telling y'all, if you haven't watched Mad Men, you have got to watch Mad Men. It's. Yeah. I, I Jen did, Amber um, I did, uh, is saying cheating is probably part of that. I did a stitch on, was it, I think, CO Sunset or something like that. Because she was talking about how she was watching um, the TV show You. Um, and I watched. I, I saw a while that. a while back yeah i watched i think like two episodes or whatever and i was just like i that was when i was first starting to learn some stuff and it like freaked me out i was like i can't watch this anymore um but yeah whenever i watched that i was with kayla and at that time i supply at the same time so it was a little awkward oh so you got a little bit of a uh i i remember you saying on that video if i don't change something that's going to be me Or, or also, like, this could easily be me, like, in my yeah. dark days, like, I could easily go this direction. Yeah. Yeah, and the becoming more aware and starting to realize some of that sometimes is also, like, freaky because, like, you get to the place where you're kind of like, wow, like, I could see, like, if I wasn't working on myself or I could see if I wasn't thinking better thoughts, like, this is the direction I would be going. You know, I, um... I was doing a one on one with someone the other day and they were talking about like how like they had been in like some physical abuse and stuff like that. And we were talking through some of that with narcissism. And I was like, yeah, like narcissism a lot of times will lead to physical abuse because the emotional abuse mm -hmm. just ramps up more and more till it becomes physical abuse. Mm -hmm. And I was like, even mm -hmm. in my own life, like I haven't been physically abusive with my wife, but I've gotten to the place emotionally abusive, like hundred percent. And I've also got to a place where I've been emotionally abusive, where I've like felt it and like heard it in my head of like, this is why people hit, this is why people do this, and like that that for me was even just like a like even like stop me in my tracks of like whoa like again if I don't work on myself if I don't work on changing my mindset like on a bad day this could be me that kind of thing. You keep cutting in and out a little bit. Are you, is one of your earbuds like touching I I, something? I think my left, I think my right one is like going bad, to be honest. Let's, I'll, I'll let's try it. it. Yeah. Okay, so. I think so, it's my right one that's going bad because earlier today I was on the phone. There you go. That's better. That's better. So we you have somebody who. For Christmas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay <laughs> so mama heights keeps asking the question on my my side and yours about how do you stop a, a narcissist from getting revenge i'm just going to tell you from my experience you don't they you cannot control them they will do whatever they want they will stalk you i'm talking about my own parents and uh the ex i was with um you can't stop them what you have to do is block them you have to file police reports you have to get a ppo you have to, if you need to, like, you have to take action on your own to prevent them from, from that. And like, I know, I don't, I'm sure I will be 87 years old. And if he's still alive, he will still be trying to stalk me on Venmo or whatever app is out there later. All I can do is block, file a police report and get enough evidence to get another PPO. I mean, it's the system is, the, it, it's not 
that's why so many of us are out here educating. The system is a bunch of BS, but the bottom line is that you can't stop them. You have to be proactive for yourself. Um, I would contact a domestic uh, violence shelter or a domestic ab abuse shelter. I would get an advocate. Um, I would utilize whatever resources you can, um, but they won't stop. Some of this, not all of them, but some of them won't stop. Um, so I would utilize every resource you have on that. And, um, you know, I have wasps, I could show you, I have wasps spray right by my front door. The last crazy email I got, he in, in, insinuated that he was going to come over to my house. I'm like, come on, because I've got a ring. I can video you and I've got wasp spray right at the door. Let's go. I didn't say anything to him. I completely ignored him, but I'm you know, you get to a point where, you know, you have to fight back with whatever resources are available. Um, cause I don't know, Ben, I don't, I don't really know if you, if you've stopped people before or not, but like, um, certain narcissists or sociopaths, they're, they're not going to stop. So I mean, if I put my we have mind to take to control it, and be powerful. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely, I would definitely agree a hundred percent with everything you said about like, limit that like block them things like that but when you think about it from the the opposite side of it like the ultimate revenge is getting a response and is getting a reaction mm -hmm. and so if mm -hmm. the narcissist never gets a response and never gets a reaction i'm not saying that that will make them stop or make them leave but there is a higher probability that they will get bored or tired of it because they're not getting a response hence gray rocking is a lot of times effective mm -hmm. sometimes it gets a lot worse before it gets better but um, a lot of times gray rocking is very effective because you're trying to provoke a response from the other person. When you don't get a response, you're like, okay, I can get a response easier from someone else. So I'm going to go to someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> someone else's husband's name is Ben too. Um, Someone said they're in love with a person who does not exist. That is very true. Um, mm -hmm. Fabrication and lies is what they build a lot of times. <clears> and then <throat> you're in love with someone that they no longer can produce or they've gotten tired of producing it. Or they never were in the first place. They right. were like putting they got on a tired mask of that like, looked that like mask. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, which, wait, I, I just thought of something. Yeah. Which is why when they finally get you, they like get you like, like somehow have convinced you to marry them, move in with them, um, whatever they, they see as, as, you know, having obtained you now that mask, it slips. There were always hints. Like a lot of us realize this now, like going back, I would have probably stopped talking to him before I ever went out with them. Cause I would have seen the flags early. Like mm -hmm. I love you. And I think you're my soulmate. And I, I know it's early and we've only been talking for two weeks and we've only been out on one date. Um, excuse me, sir. You know what I mean? Like now, but like when, when you don't know about this, you don't know. And, um, the, it seems like the, they'll test you a little bit until they get you. But once they get you, that mask is, it's fast. Mm -hmm. And I think they're like, oh, phew, let me take this off. You know, now yeah. I can really show you the, the real you because I've got you. And that's and why that it's so point, shocking. The narcissist, like gets so confused in some sense of like, why are you changing how you're responding to me? Like, this is who I actually am. <laughs> Where the whole time they've just been faking it and like gaslighting the whole time. And then all of a sudden they reveal who they are. And the person's like, ew, like I didn't sign up for this. And be like, <laughs> too late now bud you know um yeah so is ask, the narcissist we... actually confused hmm? like you're actually confused i think some are yeah like when they actually lower the mask or when they actually like i think i think there's a level of at times like surprise of like this is who i am like what's your problem you know Depen <laughs> no. depending on how uh, depending on what level they are or what awareness they might have, you know, or that's when they switch over the victim mentality of, you know, mm -hmm. see, I knew I wasn't good enough. Like, see, like, blah, 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 where in reality, mm -hmm. like, they're the ones that created it, but they don't want to admit that they actually created it. Interesting. Someone asked on here, how do we break the trauma bond? Um, breaking your trauma bond is really difficult because you have to be able to 
look at the other person with truth. And that's really hard to be able to see through. You have to be able to look at the other person and see the fact of, hey, if they actually cared about me, they wouldn't have manipulated me. They wouldn't have gaslit me. They wouldn't have emotionally and mentally abused me or physically abused me or whatever it might be. And like being able to be honest and real with who that person actually is and what they've actually Mm -hmm. done. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you have to necessarily like paint them out as this huge villainous person. Like a lot of people are, but you do have to be real and be honest with, Hey, this is not love. This is not care. This Mm -hmm. is not kind. And being able to, being able to paint an accurate picture to be able to look at and see like, okay, like the only way I can actually move out of a trauma bond is to admit, either admit that I'm in one or admit to that the reason I'm in one is because of this person being manipulative, uncaring, unkind, unloving. And that's who that person is. And I need to learn what I need to do to make myself be the best version of myself to be able to continue growing and healing regardless of that other person. I think it helps to like, I know for me, like he would be like, you know, you're, you know, you're a stonewaller and you are abusive and you're blah, 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 while he's towering over me, spitting on me and everything else. And I was just like, this guy legit has no idea who I am. Like, and he never did. And he would always say to me, I know exactly who you are. I know everything about you. And I was like, you know, a person who you're abusing and how I react to the abuse and how I pull away from the abuse and, and, you know, all of that. But you have no idea who I am. You know, like, I think that's as much as we never knew them, they never knew us because they were just looking for the surface things to mirror. And, you know, and for a lot of us, they resent our kindness. They resent our empathy. They resent the way people respond to us and our and our bright energy and all of that because they wanted it to be like, you know, to shine with us. But once they realized that this person is everything that I said I wanted, but I can't keep up with them because that because we're authentic and you like not you, but they have to put on the mask and there's a lot of resentment there. Right. So they never really knew you because that's why all the conversations are surface oriented with with the unaware narcissist. Right. So. As much as we don't know them, they, they never knew us, not the real us. And I think for me, that really helps. So I don't know if that helps all of you, but it really helped me. I think for for me in the past, like realizing that the other person like didn't care and didn't care in the aspect of they didn't follow through with actions and like actually admitting mm-hmm. that to myself of like, I feel like I'm still in love with them. I feel like I still love them. Like, I don't want to let go. Like we could still figure out how to make this work, but then realizing like, okay, if they actually did care and if they actually did love, then they wouldn't have done what they did. Are you talking about when you were with the other narcissist? Yeah. Yeah. So you got a taste of that then through that. It sounds like that really affected you in a little bit. Do narcs ever consider that they have left the wrong supply and missed them? Um, they don't miss us. They miss what we did for them. They miss what, how we made them look. They don't miss the, how can you miss somebody you never knew? Yeah. Cause a lot of times their version of love is very much like, what can I get out of it? Or I love because the other person loves me, like not because they actually care about them. Mm-hmm. Jen, Jen Amber, who I love, by the way, I hope you guys follow each other, um, wanted to know how did it end with the narcissist that you were with? Was it fireworks or what was it? Like, I know it was painful, so it's it's up to you if you want to talk about it. So with that person, with that person um came out and told my wife about it the person that I was cheating on her with that was uh, had like BPD 
That was January 2020. Um, I didn't cut her out of my life, and she was in both of our lives because at that time I had Kayla in a trauma bond and was still manipulating her. But I didn't cut her out of my life till November 2020. Mm -hmm. And once I did, she didn't like how I cut her out. She didn't like, I tried to be as nice as I could, but I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't have you in my life. Um, I can't have the influence that you have on me in my life anymore. And I also can't see the, can't see and hear the things that you're doing in your life because that kind of stuff is still attractive to me. Like I can't have that in my life anymore. And so I told her that it was over and like, this is the end. And she didn't like to hear that. Um, Mm -hmm. And that, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd already lost my job because of her, um, because of her communicating some stuff, which I mean, it's, it's still, it still comes down to my own actions. If I hadn't done the actions to start off with, I wouldn't have lost the job, but the job wasn't in jeopardy until, um, she went on to stuff. And then, um, after, after that, then that's when she also tried to go on more of a smear campaign to other people that were in my life and her life. And that's why I don't really have anybody in those circles anymore in my life. Cause they're all gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, thank you for answering that. I know it's a tough one. There's a little bit of vulnerability for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, moving on. We, I know, but but <laughs> we appreciate it though. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, do I believe that some people are just plain evil? Um, I believe that there are people that are evil. I believe there are people that have, like, I mean, I'm also, I also believe in God. I'm also a Christian, so I believe that everybody is a sinner and they have the tendency to be evil and depending on how far they go, like it can only get worse um, apart from something or someone coming in and changing their lives and working towards that. So I think we all have the tendency to be evil. We all have that tendency and some people go that direction. Some people don't. Some people go farther than others, unfortunately. Uh, when an so hang goes, on. I'm oh, sorry. Wait, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, some of my good friends, some of my good friends that are on here right now that I've been friends with since the, pretty much the beginning of either my TikTok or theirs yeah. are saying that they don't know you. And I think they're a little confused. Um, and I would totally recommend that you go follow Ben um, because he is another self-aware narcissist. If you look at his videos, he is very open about everything because he's really trying to heal himself and help all of us see it from the narcissistic perspective so that we can get out and, and, you know, not we meaning all victims become survivors and he's very open and his wife has a TikTok too and she sees all his videos and he sees hers and they are working on their marriage and um so all of this is out in the open um and he he what is your goal on this platform and with raw motivation and everything else yeah yeah, so um, my goal really is to promote awareness, change, growth, and healing. That's really like the four things that I've put out there as, as my goal. Is I want to make people aware of narcissism. Um, I want to bring awareness to narcissism in like every circle out there. Um, I do think that mm-hmm. for me particularly, coming from a Christian and like a God background, I do think there's a lot of narcissistic abuse and a lot of narcissism that gets overlooked in Christian circles because they don't view it as being legit. Um, They just pass over it a lot of times. And I think that affects a lot of marriages and a lot of people in the church in Christianity as well. Um, I -hmm. want to bring change. I want to bring change to myself. I want to help bring change to others, Um, whether that's with some of the one-on-ones that I've been doing with different people, whether that's trying to help people see it from a different side um, that are struggling with narcissistic abuse and like how to make plans of, you know, how to get out or how to work through some issues or some problems um, or whether that's actually talking to other, other guys or gals out there that struggle with narcissism. And I'm saying like, Hey, this is what you need to work on or Hey, this is what's going on or Hey, you need to cut the lies. Like I've been able to talk to several different guys about that, especially um about like them getting help and about them like oh I feel this way or Mm -hmm. I feel narcissistic um and then really trying to bring 
change and healing. So like healing in my life, healing in other people's lives, helping some people have closure, helping some people understand, um, helping some people at times not feel bad that they're getting out of a trauma bond or relationship because Mm -hmm. like they think that that's an awful thing or they think that they're being unfair to a person when in reality, that's not the case. They're, they're finally being able to uh, invest in themselves and grow where the other person doesn't care about that. Um, so based on some of the questions I'm getting, I I know, like I have, so Ben and I are different. Like I've completely left the church. I did a long time ago. I have a degree in education psychology, well, a minor in psychology, and I'm also a minister of the word in the Lutheran church. And I left because of a myriad of reasons, but religious abuse was a part of it. Um, I respect everyone's faith. I do consider myself to be more on the spiritual side. Um, having said that, you told a story last live or live before that about why you and Kayla decided to leave a Christian counselor or pastor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, would you mind telling that story? Because I think it would help some of the people on my side here. Yeah, absolutely. So so just to clarify a little bit. Yeah, so we left a Christian, Christian-focused, Christian-based counselor. Um, we didn't leave the church that we're in. We didn't leave the pastor that we're with. Um, we didn't leave the small group we're involved in. Kayla's got a lot of good friends. Um, the One of the pastors in the church is someone that I meet with. It was like super regular, especially when all this was going on. Um, and he knows about like everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been really, he's been really open and really um, supportive of me, like trying to build a change, trying to work on the marriage you know, everything like that in a, in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, but we did leave a guy who was, um, we're, we're going to a different counselor slash therapist now, um, that has like some, um, like Christian background, but the counseling isn't Christian necessarily focused. Like it's not just Mm -hmm. focused on love your wife, love God, be better (laughs) because, you know, in reality, like that's good. And it's true from my perspective, but at the same time, that doesn't always fix it if there's things blocking us from actually getting there like wanting to change the marriage or wanting to cut the lies or wanting to be honest with each other and it got Mm -hmm. to a place where we were in the counseling we were going to it and like I started picking up on stuff of how the counselor was communicating um towards Kayla and how the counselor was communicating towards me and how the counselor was just communicating in general that I was like this is not very helpful (laughs) like like we were going through it and I was just picking up on different things where Um, I was like, how you just said that, like, that is like fire for me because I can take that and turn that around and make her to be the bad guy. Um, which is why like, it's very, again, I know we normally say this like every live, but it's very crucial. Like, be careful not to go to couples counseling with a narcissist because like, like it's like perfect feeding ground for us to have a plenty of material to be able to make you out to be the bad guy. Um, because like the counselor mm-hmm. or you know, will try to, will try to be non-biased and try to look at it from both sides and be like, well, did you make it, you know, easy for this person or did you respond this way? And they're like, oh, well, no, like they didn't make it easy for me because they did, you know, it's very easy for a narcissist to be able to manipulate and like try to control in counseling sessions and stuff like that. So anyways, um, part of the focus wasn't necessarily on the narcissism and working through some of that um, together, it was more or less like, what does she do to make it better? Or like, blah, blah, blah. And like, I remember the first, that was a while ago, the first, oh, counselor, getting mad. <laughs> the first counselor that we went to like six years ago or something like that was a Christian counselor. And by the end of the counseling, um, Kayla felt like it was her fault that I cheated. Mm -hmm. Um, just because of how he communicated and how he, how he went through it. And some of the concepts I think that he shared were good and true, but how they're communicated and also not knowing your audience well enough to know, like, I'm communicating this to a narcissist and to an empath, like, this isn't going to turn out well. But I think a lot of people don't care. And a lot of people don't realize those triggers and those people out there. They just, here's the curriculum check the box. Okay. Now you guys should be good kind of thing. Erica, I hope it's helping. So queen Erica here is one of my favorites. She and I have been friends since I first joined TikTok. 
She has been through seven, six or seven years now of constant abuse. So has the new supply, new wife after her, who is now an ex. And she is saying so much of what you're saying is what she experienced in therapy with the church's therapist. And so that's so I really appreciate you taking the time to explain that. And then also, I want you to know personally, um, as a woman in the church, I appreciate the fact that you said, if this guy keeps going down this route, my wife is going to take all the blame for my behavior. And that's unacceptable. And so thank you for standing up for her that way. Because, and you know, my background, I told you, I've mm -hmm. seen this stuff. I've seen how they, how patriarchal it is. Um, so thank you for well, sharing my, that. And for, I think, I think when we, when we went to this guy, my, my well Kayla's first red flag and my red flag at the same time knowing Kayla was he early on in like the intake he was like going through like what I filled out and what she filled out and he said something he looked at something about um oh about like Sophia about our daughter and he said something about like punishment and he was, he asked if we spank and Kayla was like no like we're trying to do more like respectful parenting and he was like, well, maybe you should like rethink that kind of thing. And like, she, like, I, I could just tell by looking at her, she took, like, she was just like ready to come after him. And, and I, I was like, I was like, this guy, like, like doesn't really understand. Like I, I, I got spanked growing up. Like that obviously worked for me. You know, like, right. It didn't. Look how healthy you are, dude. <laughs> yeah. It didn't, it didn't change. It, like just, it didn't change the inside. It just helped me conform to figure out how to get out of it. Um, and mm -hmm. so like, that was like a huge, like red flag at the beginning Then we kept going and I started seeing more stuff and I was just like, yeah, no. And then like, my parents were really nice. Like they, they volunteered to like pay, like they were like paying for a little bit. And then we told them, we were just like, we're not seeing it. Like this isn't working. We gave them a couple examples and they were like, why don't you go like just one more time and like tell them. And I was, and then finally we talked about it, Kayla and I was like, I was like, no, I was like, I'm not going to waste his time and I'm not going to waste mine. So I like wrote him an email and I was like, thanks, but X, Y, and Z. And then we didn't go back anymore. <laughs> bye. But, yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, that's, I'm so glad because it's so harmful. So harmful. Um. So, yeah. And that's the thing, like so many victims stay because like my friend Mending Me talks about this all the time. I haven't talked so much about all the religious stuff myself i've touched on it but that's why we stay that's why we keep getting into it that's why we might even marry these people oh my god you had sex before you got married now you have to get married you've yeah. already sinned you have to get married you know like it, it's just like all this anyway that's a whole different discussion but like yeah there's a lot of religious trauma that i think leads us into these kind of relationships. So I'm really glad that you guys like worked together on that and that you recognized um, that together and got somebody that was better. And you're both in individual therapy too, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're with like the Which same is... like group, like I see one therapist, she sees <laughs> another therapist and then we together see a third therapist for our couple. That's so it's, That's... It's, it's like all together, but it's kind of cool because we like sign like multiple agreements so all three therapists can talk to each other mm -hmm. so like that's that's kind of cool too and and even like my therapist like even like she told me whenever we were looking at doing it she was like if it's something where like you don't even feel comfortable or safe at times she's like we can all meet and have like all of us like in the same room at the same time which i don't know that'd be kind of interesting but the guy that we're we've only met with him once and then we went out of town we're meeting with him tomorrow um he seems pretty nice and everything but he he has like psychotherapy, like talk therapy, and then like what was it? His it was uh something along the lines of like emotional. I can't think of the right word. Um, something along the lines of, of like emotional healing therapy, like something like I don't I don't remember exactly, but like it wasn't it wasn't like he was coming to the table being like, hey, like you know, I'm a Christian and this is what we're going to be going over. Like, it was nothing like that. It was night and day mm -hmm. difference coming in to talk to this mm -hmm. guy. That's amazing. Um, so while you're looking, yeah. So Jen, Amber, absolutely. So unaware narcs, they love having a therapist on their side if they can manipulate them, right? Like that's, 
some of them, that's their very favorite thing. If I can manipulate this, if I have to go, if I have to go to keep the supply, I'll go two, three, four times. I'll manipulate the therapist and see if I can get them to say I'm not the problem, right? The funny thing is, though, sometimes you'll notice them all of a sudden they love their therapist. Their therapist is the best. And then all of a sudden their therapist is giving me sketchy information. I don't know about them. They're like really not paying attention to me in session. I think I need to find a new therapist. And so then they'll go and find a new therapist. Now, remember, they're not really in therapy for therapy. They're in it just to keep their supplier, do whatever they have to do. And they'll see this next therapist and, oh, my God, they're the best. They're amazing. You know, I'm not really sure about this guy. This And it goes on and on. And I think what happens is, like, I know for sure in my case, there was a diagnosis, right? And like Ben was just saying, I know that because of all the paperwork that we had to sign because she split us into individual therapy because he was out of control in therapy. But he went on to see, I want to say four other therapists quit all of them within six weeks. And I think it's because they started to figure him out and started to call him out. You know, um, what I think is sort of like in my mind, and I'm not laughing, but I'm like so far past all that. It's kind of funny to me now because I can see him c- continuing to tell people like I've had extensive therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so extensive, like three week therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so move on to the next one. Yeah. I mean, I went through four, three, four, something like that before I found the one that I'm with now. And <laughs> one of the ones we did a, we, uh, she sent a thing, um, is what the Gottman Institute or whatever. Like she sent a thing for me to fill out and for Kayla to fill out to see like our compatibility, like what we matched up on and everything. And it was, it was like pretty awful. And like, we were like there and we were like talking and the therapist and I like started like arguing and it was very like interesting, but like, she was like basically refusing to acknowledge like some of the stuff that I was like dealing with or struggling with when it came to narcissism and was trying to peg me more on the ADHD side. And Mm. she was like, yeah, we went through Mm -hmm. this stuff. And I was like, no, we didn't. And like, she was like telling me that we went through stuff. And like, after that session, I was just like, okay, next, like moving on. I was like, this is not helpful, but. So the biggest, the biggest sign, like, um, and Dr. Romney has talked about this, but my partner has eight, well, thinks he has ADHD. I'm pretty sure we're pretty sure he does. But also I've done research on this and I have a, a comment that I saved to do a um, post on this or a video on this because people with ADHD, when they make a mistake or they say something because they blurted it out and it was hurtful and then the other person is hurt and they express that they have a great deep empathy. They feel so embarrassed. They feel so much shame. They are so loving and just like they take it so hard that they hurt somebody. So ADHD and narcissism are not the same thing, but every once in a while, somebody will, will Mm -hmm. say that they will say, no, it's ADHD. No, it isn't. It's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that you said that. Yeah. It was interesting too, because the, the girl that I was with for a while that had BPD, her dad is like extremely like narcissistic and, from what I heard for a while, like uh, her dad and their mom actually went to therapy for a period of time or counseling, and um, the count the the therapist finally like said to him, it was like if you if it wasn't for like these tests or whatever that he had done, if it wasn't for like you having ADHD, like you would be like hundred percent a narcissist, and like. I don't know if it ever got through. I doubt because I mean, he's, he's older. So it's probably just ingrained at this point, but like the seeing it firsthand at times and then hearing like the stories from, from her or sister just about like the gaslighting or the love bombing or the manipulation kind of a thing, like definitely showed where he fell on that. It was kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my in real life friend, um, Tim Baker, HR, um, who I've known for years. Yes. Um, he is saying this because some of the behaviors are the same and that's why it's confusing. And that's true. So like, let's say a narcissist, um, knows that you have a super busy day, you work, you come home, you take care of the dog, you go back to work, you take care of the kids, whatever's going on. And they deliberately leave the kitchen a disaster the night after you spent cleaning it. Like they deliberately mess it up. Right. That looks like 
ADHD, if you don't know about narcissism, because sometimes people with ADHD were going to clean the kitchen, starting started to clean the kitchen, got distracted by a phone call or a, a message or something, realized they were late for work, got dressed, um, and then rushed out the door. And then you're like, what the hell? Like, what happened to the kitchen? And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Where narcissists would be like, I don't know. What happened to the kitchen, right? So it's a totally different there it's totally different, but it can look like that um until you until you understand the difference. That's just like a tiny little example of what could happen, but yeah, yeah, it's never purposeful with somebody with a d h d that's the difference now they have to learn how to how to live within the a d h d and the partner needs to understand the a d a d h d and all that stuff, but it's never meant to be hurtful that makes sense. You got any questions on your side? Um, mostly, yeah, executive dysfunction. Yep, exactly. That's also part of it. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of conversation going on on my side between my folks, which is great. Yeah, I have some conversation going on over here too. So I didn't have a ton of questions. So here. let's talk about, let's talk about, so, so, me and Ben have been talking, and so if I don't know if Lee's still here or not, but also with Lee, um, and there's been some pushing of these gentlemen on my side to get some stuff together, and I haven't done a lot, but I did start a YouTube. Um, I'm meeting with my um, daughter, who's my communications director this week, and she has a degree in it, so she knows her stuff. And we're changing up my website. We're adding more videos. Um, I did start adding some videos to Instagram. And um, part of the website chain. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know. I can't figure out how to trim them. So she has to help me with that. Um, I think just recently I am we became offering... Instagram friends because I was like, oh, wait, we weren't Instagram <laughs> friends. And then I started seeing you post stuff. And I was like, oh, she hasn't actually like posted on here. Because I still am confused about Instagram just looks like so much <laughs> stuff, but I am figuring it out. I'm, I'm trying. Um, but it's good. I have started one-on-ones and I put them in my link tree. It's not even on my website or anything like that, but I have already gotten a client that's like scheduled several sessions. Oh, nice. It's, it's much less expensive than my life coaching because life coaching involves emailing and texting and a lot of extra stuff. But the one-on-ones are up. If anybody wants to do one with me, every time I try to post about it on TikTok, it suppresses the video. I've tried twice <laughs> and it's like 300 views. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to do one-on-ones with me, you can, it's in my link tree and um, Ben is making me do a YouTube. So <laughs> I'm going to be doing YouTube now. We had a fun coaching conversation on that. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was I best. love your video on that. That was the best. I love, so I love that conversation. Like that conversation is like, like, I guess we've talked about like good supply. Like that conversation is like, like food for my soul. Like that was like a lot of fun, Aww. but also like really cool just to be able to, for me, it's like really neat to be able to try to like step somebody through something or try to like, like help like walk someone through something i think that's really cool i was like did you just coach the coach like he <laughs> literally walked me through why i need to go on youtube because even if i only help one person that's one person i've helped and i was like damn he's good so you are now doing what tell them about raw motivation and some of your stuff yeah so i've slowly been working on like rebranding and getting on other other social media platforms so right now with youtube um, and instagram um, are really the big ones my facebook's all jacked up from like some marketing stuff i did a while back and it like screwed it all up but instagram and youtube right now are what i'm kind of like working on um, which is surprising because like the like uh instagram i think i'm at like 1100 or whatever but like so far, all my one on ones have come from uh, Instagram and YouTube, which is like shocking because like, really, that's like brand that's like old stuff because I, I'm just posting like old, like for YouTube, all I've been posting is just shorts. I've just been posting stuff from TikTok um, and all my one on ones so far have been from there. I think I've had four or five just in the past like week. Are you serious? Yeah. So like, well, not this past week because we were gone, but I had like three the week before and we got back. And I had two on Sunday. I had one yesterday. I've got one tomorrow. And I've already got one for next week. Um, so it's been kind of cool like seeing, I, it, seeing it pop up. 
I loved my one-on-one -on -one so much. It was so much it, like, like, obviously there was a lot of trauma that, you know, she had to talk about and all of that, but just being there to support her. And every single time I was like, so I completely empathize. Here's an idea for you. Here's a suggestion. She was like, you understand this? And I'm like, yes, because <laughs> I've been through all this stuff. Like, and, and so, so like just seeing how, like, what a bright light this person was and to be able to be there was so meaningful for me. And so, you know, not that it's about me, but I was just amazing experience to be able to do the one-on-ones. Um, sure. It's, and I know that you've told me how much you enjoy them. I just didn't know that they were mostly coming from YouTube. Yeah. I was surprised. One was from YouTube. The guy was like, you need to make longer videos. Cause I got tired of like scrolling through all your minute long videos. And then, um, another one was from Instagram and evidently I'm like catching like several people from Instagram on more of like the UK side. Um, cause that's like one that mm. I talked to was in like, uh, like Nottingham and was like, um, talking to me, she's in a long distance relationship and all. Um, sorry, someone, someone questioned twice. So I'm gonna answer real quick. Do narcs get better as they age? Typically no, because their habits get ingrained more, their lives get, um, more profound and they just keep doing the same habits they've always done. They typically don't get better. Um, but going oh, back to it, like so I, much am, worse. I am doing one on one, so I'm I'm gonna try to separate it some um, because I do believe I can bring some value on just like coaching in general, um, and I think I need to like label it as far as like life coaching or something, um, so it's not just narcissism. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have on my website like narcissism talks as well, so like trying to um, trying to be able to differentiate and connect with people of like. How can I help people get to the next level? And then also, like, how can I work with people that are struggling with narcissism, narcissistic abuse, whatever it might be? So I have been starting to do one-on-ones. I've got that in, my, in, the, in the link on my bio. Um, you can check out my website, rawmotivations.com. Um, you can go on there, schedule a coaching. It um, pops up where we can do a Zoom call, things like that. So um, it's been really neat. I think I would say, like, one tidbit I had. Um, that I'll share from one of my coaching conversations. Um, we were talking about narcissism and she was talking about um, the the lady that I was talking about is in a relationship and the guy at, the, at this point has shown lots of narcissistic tendencies, but has also shown um, a level of, a, le a possible level of awareness and like willing to go to counseling and stuff like that. And so I, I, I told her, I gave her like, you know, beware of a lot of stuff, you know, make sure there's consistent change. But then what I told her was this, I was like, I was like, set maybe like six goals, set maybe six goals of this is what has to happen. This is what he needs to do. And I say at max communicate only two of those to him. Because if you list out all your goals, the narcissist is going to perform to them every single time. Because if you yeah, set a goal, don't. it's really mm -hmm. easy to perform to that. And, and because that's what they did to start off with. You know, you told them like, oh, mm -hmm. I love a man that does this. Boom. I'm that guy. You know, like, oh, I love a guy that's romantic in this way. Boom. Gotcha on that note. You know, and they just keep going. So I mm -hmm. said, set six goals. Let them know max of two of them. If he performs those two, like, that's awesome. But he still has to hit the other goals of, like, actually going to therapy, of, like, actually changing, of actually working through a couple of things. And I was like, you need to make, like, a cutoff, like, just like you would with, with stocks or with gambling. Like, this is your limit. And you have to be able to have that cutoff. And it's not a cutoff Set that you can date. know about. Yep. It has to be, like here's my six goals. If he doesn't meet the fourth goal by, you know, month two, then, you know, sayonara, you know. That's amazing. I might steal that from you. I mean, I do tell people, don't tell them everything. Right. You know, I tell them to make a list of their must haves and never wills again and all that, but don't share that either with a new potential partner or the current one. Mm -hmm. um because of exactly what you said but i like how you said the six that's really cool i think that's, that's good see that's i'm telling you that... he's good i <laughs> that's one thing i've been noticing and then also like i feel like you know recently you and i were talking about like um because we saw a couple of videos we passed around about like people throwing around the word like narcissism and narcissistic and stuff like that um in the narcissism <laughs> category what i've been feeling and thinking more often is i feel like a lot of people throw out the word boundaries but I think they do it very casually and very quickly. And a lot of times people just view boundaries as like, hmm. All right, let me think. All right, people, uh, here we go. So people view boundaries as a fence in the middle of a field. Okay, they view that as a boundary of just going up to it and someone either pushes it over or they step over it and then they're on the other side of the field. 
Okay. In narcissism, that's not what a boundary is supposed to be. A boundary is supposed to be exactly. a fence that's on the edge of a cliff. There's a consequence on the other <laughs> side. But the problem is a lot of times people say, oh, set boundaries. And people set boundaries, but they don't ever set a consequence. So what happens is the narcissist comes up to it, pushes the fence or steps over it. Nothing actually happens. So that means, oh, I'm good to keep breaking that boundary. So I really think a lot of awareness exactly. is being brought around the idea of boundaries with the word consequence mm -hmm. attached. I think they need to go hand in hand more. We should do, we should make our, maybe make our next live could be about boundaries because that's what I think a lot of mis people misunderstand and you explain that so well, but the boundary breaking should be the sign that the relationship is over. There shouldn't be another chance because the first boundary they break and you say, I, well, I'm really upset that you did that and I told you this and I told you that and they're like, okay. And now the next one, they're going to break again. And it's going to be, cons it's almost like a, like, I'm sorry, but it's almost like a game, right? Yeah. The it boundaries is. are not really to control anyone else's behavior. Boundaries are you saying, this is what I will and will not accept. If you don't want to accept that, that's cool. Then we can't be together. Uh, and that's, that. that's fine. I want, to, I want to add to what the phrase that you just said. So boundaries are not to limit someone's behavior boundaries are to limit your acceptance of abuse. Yes. I think we've got a topic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, well, very, it's very true. Like, and that's, I think, I think there needs to be more awareness. I, I remember there was someone who's like talking to me about like being nervous about getting back into, you know, dating or how do I move past this? You know, how do we even, catch this like what are the red flags and stuff like that and i remember telling someone like early on in like a relationship like tell someone no like see how they respond like set a boundary that is so true. and if they if they break it then there's a red flag right there that you know this is not if they're going to break that boundary they're going to break more you know i will i will give you a really good example of this so my partner this is months ago said hey i'm out doing whatever it was in a COVID safe mass environment, but I have long COVID. And so I had to be careful. And he was like, do you want to come up? And I was like, you know what? Not really. Why don't you just keep doing your thing, having fun? Um, I I'm just don't feel like it's a, a good environment for me. And he's very safe too. But I, again, I, this is before the vaccine, so I couldn't take any chances. And I was like, well, why don't you have fun? And I'll talk to you later. And he was like, Okay, just wanted to ask. I hope you have a great night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Now, if I had said no to the narcissist for that reason, you're faking being sick. This is a bunch of BS. You know, you always fake being sick. Oh, you have long COVID. Like, it's, right? So, like, the, the, they're diametrically opposed. So, somebody who respects you is going to respect that. And it's a really good test. It's a really good measure. It doesn't have to be anything major. It could even be like, no, I can't meet you at 6 tonight, but I can meet you at 7.30 on Friday. Does that work for you? If they're, you know what I mean? If they're good with that, great. If they're mad or they're like, well, what are you doing? Who are you seeing? Are you dating other people? You know, whatever their situation is, then you know. Um, so saying no is such a good idea because it can just be a small no. Somebody with a hair trigger temper or a personality disorder or, or whatever is going on with them, you'll know pretty quickly. It's such a good, it's such a good tool. And even implementing it with your family, if you have a narcissistic family system and you know, well, we're doing Thanksgiving at our house at seven and you can bring the pumpkin pie. And you can say, no, actually, we're spending Thanksgiving this way, but I would love to drop by at six and say hello. You give them, you know what I mean? If they get mad about that, now you know. It's. And I think, I think the other version of it at times is like the other person like shaming or trying to guilt the other person too. I know with your, with your experience, a lot of it was mainly like anger and coming back at you, but also from like, more of the manipulative side of like, okay, well, I guess like I'll just come home and not enjoy myself or, you know, I'll come home and I'll pout about it because I didn't get to do what I wanted because of you, you know, stuff like that where it's mm -hmm. very like covert mm -hmm. and manipulative as well can, can be popular. Oh gosh. My mother would do that all the time. I guess my children don't want to be with me. I guess my children don't care that I already went shopping and got all the food 
well, you didn't tell us that. And I have my own child and my own spouse. And we were planning Thanksgiving on our own this year. Well, I guess that means you don't want me to see my granddaughter, you know, like all of that. And, you know, luckily we cut them out by the time she was four years old. So it's been almost 20 years. But yeah, so I totally know that side of it, too. I feel like, I don't know, I might be speaking out there, but I feel like that's more prevalent with narcissistic women. I know a lot of guys do that as well, but I feel like I've seen and heard more examples of like the mom doing that or the mother-in-law doing that. Yeah, they're not fun. <laughs> uh, someone asked, do you think you can, do you think you can set boundaries when getting back together with an ex? Uh I'm not sure exactly where we're falling in line as far as like if we're getting back with a narcissistic ex, like what are you doing? Um, but as far as like you have to, Don't. like if you're if you're ever trying to get back with anybody, like let's say if the person's not a narcissist and you're just trying to get back with an ex, like you need to set boundaries, period. But I wouldn't advise getting back together with a narcissist at all. Um Every single time any of my clients or my friends or followers or anybody else has gotten back with a narcissist. It has gotten worse faster and it has gotten more serious and more dangerous. And we all know it takes seven times for the average person to get out. But every single time the love bombing will be more, it'll be earlier, it'll be faster. So it's going to be the love bombing that would have taken three months before is going to take three weeks. And then the next time it's going to be a week. And then it just... It's the narcissist, you're, like Lee always says this, every time you take a narcissist back, you are giving them permission for all the abuse they gave you before. And it will only get worse. I so I don't even think it. that should be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's very true. That's, that's definitely how, that's definitely how they view it of, you know, if you take, if you take me back, then you're justifying and saying that it was okay, that everything I did was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. A break in a normal relationship is totally different. We're talking about abusive relationships here with narcissists and sociopaths. So, mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything else? I saw... No problem. It's not. It's okay. I just wanted you to know because I didn't want you to think that we were giving advice on healthy relationships. Um, right. Yeah, they lure you back with a false sense of security with promises of change, and then, then now, now you're back where you were before, and it's going to get worse because you gave them more permission. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point too. Mine always takes a break to go back to old supply, and after a few months, the Hoover comes. Yeah. Or new supply that figures them out and then um, <laughs> cuts well, it off with them. And then all of a sudden you're getting a crazy email. <laughs> so someone asked, so what's the difference between a relationship with a narc versus a sociopath? So typically, I guess how we've like talked about it before is like a sociopath is more advanced, <laughs> more an advanced narc in one sense. Um, I think you've mm -hmm. explained it a little bit, a little bit more before as far as like, kind of like the levels but then as you get more sociopathic kind of like what are the the flags as far as someone would be more of a sociopath than a narcissist they're calculating um they get a lot of what um, i mean joy is not the right word i'm trying to think of the right word they get a lot of um satisfaction from hurting you pleasure from they pain. will do things pleasure yeah um, they, they will sabotage your career or try to, they will, um, do things like take your car keys and hide them when you have to go to work. They will, um, I know that the one I was with was whispering in my ear that, um, he was going to change the passcode on my phone. And I thought I was having a nightmare and I woke up and Lee told me the other day, he was like, holy shit. Like he actually stood over you, staring at you while you were sleeping. And I was like, yeah. At the time, we were in separate bedrooms. I woke up. I was having this dream, opened my eyes, and he's literally this close to my face staring at me. So then I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I just wanted to give you a kiss goodbye. Okay, we're already in separate bedrooms. I um, go to open up my phone, couldn't get into my phone. 
had to go and take it into the T-Mobile store. They, I was like, what is this? There should be some sort of safety feature on this where, I mean, it had the same little pest thing for years. And they were like, this only happens um, in domestic violence cases or with kids fooling around with phones. I was like, hmm. So it's, it's that kind of thing. And they get enjoyment out of it. I think the difference might be with, with narcissists, depending on the spectrum of gun, I'm not so sure that they get enjoyment out of hurting the intimate partner as much as they get enjoyment out of getting away with things. Maybe that's one way to look at it. What do you think? Yeah, I can see that. Um, someone commented here about like it's the level of abuse, and like that's that's definitely true too. Is like you get into the sociopath side, you see more prevalent like being like physical abuse, like not just emotional or mental abuse, but like physical abuse, mm-hmm. like physically like lording it over like another person, um, like having that like dominance and control being, you know, mm-hmm. very high key in that relationship versus like versus like a manipulating or like gaslighting or like the emotional or mental which not downplaying those by any means but just saying like that's oftentimes like from what I've seen and heard kind of like the difference well in sociopaths some of them too they will use physical abuse but they won't actually punch you in the face or punch you somewhere that would be obvious or kick you Mm -hmm. they will accidentally push you they will accidentally shoulder you while you're walking down, like up or down the stairs to try to get you to lose your balance. They'll do things like that. So, or they'll accidentally, as happened to me, pick up a very heavy breadboard and slam it down on the finger that you broke when you were in your thirties. And um, like, well, I didn't mean to do that. That you, that breadboard hasn't, or that cutting board hasn't moved in five years. But suddenly you had to pick it up and slam it right where my finger was. Right. So things like that, where they like they are physically abusive, they'll tower over you. They'll scream in your face. They'll block you from leaving a room. But they're smart enough not to where somebody lower on the spectrum might just enrage, just, you know, physically hit somebody. A sociopath will realize where they have to stop so that you don't get to take pictures of it and say, Hey, they punched me in the face. No, that makes sense. So I mentioned here, how do you know when a narcissist is finally done with you for good? Um, odds are a lot of times is, is they're not, you know, a lot of times you have to make sure that you block and go fully no contact and there's no way they can contact you because you never know when they might try to come back. And I've heard of people that they try to come back, you know, a day later, six months later, or six years later. And so you have to be really careful with that. Um, I don't have concrete evidence. I think I've seen and heard a little bit more of like, sometimes depending on how the relationship ends, like if the narcissist views at times of there being like this huge, like betrayal, um, or like, um, I don't want to say shame, but like, really like some type of like betrayal or like hurt from the other person where the narc views as betrayal, I've seen some instances where at least I've been led to believe that that's been more of like done for good, but I don't have enough information or data to say that that is true. So, well, uh, and then when, when you dis when you discard the narcissist, like oh, some of us have, where we got our stuff, had a house or housing set up, what left when they were at work, serving with a PPO, all those kind of things, they will, you know, or even if you don't get the PPO, they will try to get you back just to prove that they weren't as bad as you said they were. I've heard of narcissists that will like do all the things just to get in, in a case of a, 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 you know, cis hetero couple, uh, male, female, just to get, get back, get with her, get her pregnant and leave her again. I've, I've had multiple people. So sometimes the narc only wants you back so they can be the one to discard you. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Yeah. I think, I think at times we see more final discards when the narc is completely in control of that discard versus someone discarding them. Mm -hmm. I think whenever someone discards the narc, there's a 99% chance that they're going to come back in some shape or form. Yeah. Very often. Um, Chica Benita says, Benny look kind of uncomfortable when she says that, does it get to you that you're a narcissist? And I asked her and she said how she was saying not to go back because they don't change and they just love bomb. 
I'm not sure how I was uncomfortable. I know when the person asked the original question about setting boundaries, going back to an ex, I wasn't sure where that question was coming from. Like if it was a narcissist, narcissistic ex, or if it was just like an ex in general. So I was a little bit more on the fence of like, yeah, you need to set boundaries. And Heather was more like, definitely like set boundaries, don't go back. But I also wasn't viewing it as being like, are they asking about a narcissistic ex or not? I didn't know. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, well, so, and just so everyone knows, like Ben and I are actual friends. Like we've become actual friends over this time. And we literally do talk every day with Lee too. We interact at least somewhat um, every day over message or yeah. either. Yeah. I don't mean talk on the phone or anything. Yeah. yeah but we message and, and we have a little group. Um, and I, and Ben and I've talked to, and I've asked him specifically about this, like, is anything that I would say hurtful, you know, cause I wouldn't want to, to do that. And you were pretty much like, no, I mean, that's pretty much what you're here for. So, um, I think that consent is important. So if a question comes up on my side that I asked Ben or, or vice versa, and one of us doesn't want to answer it, then we would just say, I'm not comfortable answering that. And that would be totally fine. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, you took me more vulnerable today than what we have been in a while earlier. So that was, and it's helpful. So we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, someone said, should you ever accuse your narc of being narcissistic? Uh, typically no, like it's not going to turn out. Very I did good a whole video you. on that. Right. Um, <laughs> a lot of times it's going to turn out with, uh, the rage and abuse coming back. Um, and, I've never heard a, con a consistent message from anybody saying like how there's a way to bring it up because I don't think there's a good way anytime to bring up narcissism to someone who is narcissistic. Um, I think, I think the only slight way that I've heard like possibility is like them stumbling across videos or them like seeing or getting involved in watching some videos, but not if it's like attacking or showing or being like, this is you, you know, that kind of thing like that that'll never end up well because the narcissist will just come back and try to trump whatever you're bringing at them. Like they'll always try to level up higher than what you're bringing. Mm -hmm. They'll try to go above that. Even if you got nothing, even if they have no nothing and they'll be like, well, what about that time three years ago where you forgot to fold the laundry and you're like, you just cheated on me. Like what? <laughs> so, which is why they pick and pick and pick and like they find the most minute things because they want to make it equal. Like you have to be like, if I'm bad, you have to be bad. Um, and it's, yeah. So it's a personality disorder. It's not a trait. Uh, yeah. You could consider a psychological condition. It cannot be medicated unless it's comorbid with like depression or something like that. Um, but they can't treat narcissism with a medication. So you would be, would you say it's, are you in like dialectical behavioral therapy or cognitive behavioral cognitive. therapy? Cognitive, yeah. yeah. Cognitive and talk mm -hmm. therapy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is actually, I, so, I, just, I just thought, I think I have, I need to check my calendar. I think I have an appointment Tuesday with that one, um, I went to see her like a while ago. I think I told you about it, but I was going to get like blood tested and like check like all my levels of, I can't remember, mm -hmm. the, can't remember the doctor or the science that she does or whatever, but I think I'm actually, I think it's this next Tuesday that I'm going. So it'd be interesting because it's been like a month since I had like, whatever it was, it was like 13 vials of blood drawn to like test all these different kind of things just to see like, like different levels, like all, all kinds of stuff. So I'm interested to see what comes out of that, if anything. That's yeah, that's that's such a good idea. Um and your eye looks good. Are you okay with Yeah, it's it's doing a lot better. I don't know if it's still it still looks a little dilated, but not too much. This one Oh yeah. Yeah. Not but, yeah, not too much I, though. There was there's one video that I did when we were on vacation and I, I think I was I think I was wearing my glasses because I wore my glasses pretty much the whole time and someone was like, Do you have a concussion or something wrong with your eye? And I was like, No, like Still finish up the eye drops because like way dilated and the other one's like, it was like bright outside <laughs> when I was in the video, but it's kind of funny. Well, um, it is almost 11 and yeah, I've got, go. I'm down to 11 people. How many do you have? Uh, 24. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think we'll probably can, be, so, we'll wrap up. Yeah. So if anybody has more like we questions or anything. We try not to go anything. over two hours. <laughs> 
So I'm I remember interested. when Ben was messaging me <laughs> and he was like, let's just do 30 minutes. And <laughs> <laughs> so the funny note about that, the, the, um, the therapist that I'm going live with on tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at one on Instagram, um, when she first like messaged me, she was like, you know, we can do live maybe like 10, 15 minutes. And I was like, um, yeah, my lives normally don't <laughs> m- normally aren't that short. And then she was like, well, I'll post and see about, um, see about having people ask questions. And so far, like, she's like, text me probably like 30 questions. I'm like, yeah, this ain't going to be a short live by any means. But if any of you all are around Instagram tomorrow, um, raw motivations, I'm going live at one um, with another person, a uh, therapist in the UK. So be interested. One, to... 1 p.m. Central time? Eastern. Eastern. You always forget oh, yeah, Eastern yeah, we're time. both Eastern. We're both Eastern time. So That's 1 right. p.m. Eastern That's time right. um, on Instagram, raw motivations. I'll be I'll be on for a little bit or a long bit, depending on how long the questions take. So kind of interested to see. A little nervous. I've never done it. I, on. I don't know if we can. I'm hoping I can like save it on Instagram because I normally like download and save like our lives here. I need to see if I can do that on Instagram. So I yeah, can I'm not sure. I think I'm going to be with a client, but I would love to see it if there's a way for you to post it on like YouTube or whatever. Yeah. No, absolutely. If I can download it or save it, I'll put it on YouTube with the other lives that, that I normally do from us. Which I've never even seen. I have to, <laughs> I'm getting on it though. This, this next, this whole next week, this is a YouTube week. So this next week, like you starting to like, do you have a channel already or are you starting to build it? From yeah, scratch or? I do, but okay. I've only put two, two shorts on it. Um, which is easy to do, but I have to go back in and like title it and put the hashtags and stuff like that. I was just trying to figure out how to do it, you know? Um, So I, yeah, but we can go live there too. Lee, from what Lee's telling us, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty active platform still. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Uh, My Instagram is raw motivations. So if you uh if you go just on TikTok, if you just click the the link in my bio, it'll give you a list of my Instagram and a couple things there. So raw motivations, um, live tomorrow, one PM Eastern time. So <laughs> Yeah, and I'm Heather Coleman Voss like everywhere. So um if you want to join me, I'm learn- I'm figuring out Instagram and stuff. Um and obviously I've got Facebook, LinkedIn, all that stuff. So I'm open. I've been really debating like if I if I should go ahead and try to change my name on here to make it match everything because everything everywhere else I've got it now changed to raw motivations but the raw motivations isn't available on TikTok unless I do like an underscore or unless I add like an extra s at the end or something like that. So can't you do like can you keep it um you can do like one name and one handle right on TikTok so could you still be at Penn Taylor 300, but then be raw motivations as your name, but keep your handle. So everybody knows how to tag you and stuff. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to look at that. I, I didn't know about that. Cause I see, well, that's how that's like Sarah, Jessica. I see her name, Sarah, Jessica. Mm-hmm. And then she shows up at Le Disco Mama, but I've seen people mm-hmm. tag her and other people as like at SJ. Mm-hmm. And if you click it, it goes back to Le Disco Mama. So that, okay, that yeah. might, that might be a fix. Yeah, where I could just leave the Ben Taylor 300 because that's like the main link and then have Raw Motivations as like the title. Yeah, um, Brie and Lipstick and Ativan and saying, so yeah, so Lipstick okay. and Ativan is saying, I'm Rachel and Lipstick and then Brie is saying, yes, you can. So I think you can do it. Okay. Thank you. I will figure that out tonight then. Cool. All right. Well, um, that's about all I got. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's been really fun, and thank you, everybody, for being here, and thank you to everybody who accepted the moderator um, titles for both of us. It's really helpful. So do you think it's possible for us to do this every week, or should we just say, like, every other week? I mean, just see? I think it's possible. I think there's, yeah, Thursdays, Thursday work, Thursdays work out pretty decent. So okay. I think we can always shoot for it and then kind of see how it goes. So I feel like... I honestly feel like we were building, like, not that we didn't have a good following tonight, but I feel like we were building good repetition. And I feel like tonight we did, we had a lot of people engaged, but I feel like it has been less than what it was building up to be. So I feel like if we get in more of a regular habit, then that'll be good. And we'll just have to, I think if we get it developed where it's going to be every single week, then we might have to 
develop a little bit more time constraints since we tend to go really long sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, that, well, that's true, right? Like consistency is important and just people know, you know, right. that we're going on. And so, yeah, we'll do that. But thank you everyone yeah. for being here. We love you very much. Uh, thank you. Sorry, you just Appreciate joined. We're that. heading out. So we'll try to be back <laughs> then next Thursday, uh, probably around 9 p.m. Eastern time. Sounds yes, good. that right. sounds good. All right. Have a good yeah. night, everybody. All right. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye.